Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this podcast. It's going to be an amazing time. I have my good friend Jared here. Hello, low co- friends. Low co-host hey, in the building. We got, a, we got a couch that fits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't mind the pink couch, guys. Nothing <laughs> weird going on here. There's blue lights on it. But yes, my wife picked this couch out. And we have our good friend Corey Russell with us. We're super excited to have you on today, Corey. It's going to be an amazing show. The power of God is already in the studio. Woo! The anointing is already flowing. Guys, the healing's already happening. The deliverance always happening. We're believing, this is episode 166, we are believing for the power of God to be released through this broadcast. Yes. We're believing for people to get healed, delivered, saved. I don't want to be just a natural, normal podcast where we get on here and just give you a bunch of information. We want to see demonstration. We want to see the yes. power of the anointing yes. of God. And I want to talk to someone. Do not click off this. If you're lukewarm, if you're complacent, if you're just a Sunday morning, cheerleading, couch warming, Uh, Facebook prophet out there that doesn't do anything for God, God is going to set you on fire in this broadcast. God is going to pour out his anointing on you. There's going to be healings, deliverances, people filled with the Holy Spirit is what I'm praying for. Corey Russell is one of my all-time favorite preachers. I think pastors are tired of me recommending him. People are like, who do you recommend? I'm like, honestly, there's only one guy that I recommend. That's Corey Russell. But I just want to say, Corey, you've been a huge inspiration in my life. When I first got saved... I was like, I need to hear some revival preaching, some awakening preaching, and you were the only person I listened to for years. I started talking like you. I think I stole a bunch of your content in my early days. I love it. But man, your content's been amazing. Even to this day, if you guys don't know, he has these uh, preaching and prayer CDs that have a beat behind them. did you say CD? What's that? Yeah, well, it was CDs back then, (laughs) but they're on Spotify, Apple, all of that under Corey Russell, and my like you have boxers and UFC fighters that have their song where they come out to and they get all hyped on when I'm about to preach I think I text you this all the time too when I'm about to preach I put on your CDs and that is like my hype music yes. that's my going to war music so guys his stuff is fire I can't recommend your stuff enough you are on fire your testimony is incredible I would love for you to share today I want to hear <laughs> some of your story how you got to this point and then we're going to talk about prayer baptism of the Holy Spirit but guys hang on because this story is incredible. This testimony is incredible. And I just, I feel the glory already. I'm getting sweaty. I should have worn a sweatshirt, bro. I feel the fire of God hit me already. But yeah, I would love you just to share some of that. Dude, I love you, Isaiah. And I'm just honored to be with you guys. Love you, Jared. Yeah, man, I am. You're going to hear a Southern accent. So for you guys out there, I'm from Northwest Arkansas. Okay. Uh, grew up in a small town and I grew up going to church like many, mm. but never actually making it personal mm. and you know, go to church and I don't know how this little eight-year-old white kid got into it, but I got into gangster rap music. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I got into gangster rap music and that kind of characterized my high school years and, you know, partying, athletics, all the stuff. After I got out of high school uh, and athletics was out of the equation, I didn't know who I was. Mm. It was an identity crisis. Wow. Go off to college and I'm going to fill that hole with more drugs, wow. more partying, more all of that kind of stuff. And I, and I spent my first year in college near Little Rock, Arkansas, came home for my first summer. And when I came home, I got my first DWI. Wow. Yeah. And so I couldn't afford to go back to college. And so I ended up getting an apartment with my best friend. You know, my best friend had been homeschooled till ninth grade. His mom's a Pentecostal praying mama, mm. just anoints everybody with oil, <laughs> praise in tongues all yes. the time. And uh, weird, but I felt God and they were weird. They were, they were different. So we get an apartment together, and we're doing the drugs that keep you up three or four days a week wow, at a time. Wow. I mean, meth was running through our region, and it destroyed us. We were getting way out there on it. But when you have a praying mom like that, on. it's T minus 10, 9, 8, <laughs> 7, until you come to the Lord. Mm. And so my friend, went. we went through a season in the fall of 96. My friend, literally for about four months, he just stopped talking. He wow. just stopped talking. He got weird. He looked at everybody with big eyes. <laughs> and for, we just kept throwing him wherever we went, but he stopped talking. It culminated on February 1st, 1997. All right, it's my birthday. I, had, I was driving down the uh, hills of Arkansas, almost had a heart attack due to the drugs I was taking. And, and I didn't know what had happened. I felt a supernatural peace come over my body. I thought it was the cool song on the radio, but God was stopping a heart attack. Wow. wow. <clears throat> it, it was actually pretty profound. So I have this experience. I show up at his house. He comes running out the front door, full speed at me, screaming, it's heaven or hell, Corey. It's heaven or hell. You need to give your life to Jesus right now. First time he's talked in four months. He's screaming at me, it's heaven or hell. I'm back and I'm going, what in the world's going on? What's going on? And he says, give your life to Jesus right now. And I said, dude, shut up. I'm leaving. So I grab my friend. We end up leaving. 
And it was known that his mom led him through a three-day deliverance. Broke the power of the devil Come off on. of him. Wow, let's go. And literally just cleansed him completely. And he came back to Jesus. He got saved and I got angry. Wow. <laughs> I felt betrayed. Yep. I'd put up with a weirdo for four months. And you don't get saved in my mind at 20 years old. You, mm. you do that later when you want to be more balanced yeah, in life. Slow and down then. You take these years to sow your wild oats and to do all these things. And so I was really angry. We well, showed up at college. I was still barely in college. And he takes me to lunch and he shares with me that for those four months, the spirit realm was opened up to him. He was seeing angels, he was seeing demons, and he was seeing that we're all being controlled by real dark spirits wow. that, are, that are controlling us. And he said, Corey, I'm seeing this on you. It's freaking me out. Wow. He says, we were shut up in the little house on that last night and the voice of the Lord broke in the middle of the party that we were at. And the voice said, Satan's raising up an army, but I'm raising up an army <laughs> <Come> too. <on. laughs> <laughs> he says, and I want you to give your life to Jesus. And so he, we're at lunch. I had just gotten my second DWI. My license was gone. And he says, give your life to Jesus, Corey. And I said, shut up and take me back to school. I said, I don't want to hear any of this. He drives back to the college, pulls into the parking lot. And right before I get out of the van, I felt a presence I had never felt before. Mm. It was the Holy Spirit. Wow. From the right of my body to my left, I felt the presence of God filled the van and before I knew it, I'm shaking violently wow. like I'm having a seizure. All I could see was a tug of war battle between light and darkness over my soul. I knew there was a battle over every soul. He pulls in the back of the parking lot and he starts praying. And he goes, in the name of Jesus, I bind the Antichrist spirit. Wow. And as soon as he bound the spirit, it manifested into a chokehold around my throat. And I couldn't breathe. Wow. And I knew I had to get out the name Jesus, but all I could get out was Jesus. And so I wow. kept trying to say his name. And I went, geez, and it got tighter. Geez, it got tighter. He's in my ear screaming, say it, <laughs> say it, say it. <laughs> and I, I'm literally talking to him, I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> and finally, I just remember taking a deep breath and with all the power inside of me screaming, Jesus. And right when I screamed his name, the hold broke off of me. And it was like God came and breathed into my mm, mouth. Mm. Wow. And for the next five minutes, all I could say is I've got air, I've got air, I've got air. And after about five minutes, I heard a voice as clear as day saying, get out of the van, get on the pavement and give me your life, your mind. Wow. wow. And so February 18th, a Tuesday at 1230, 1997, I jump out of the van into a college parking lot, kids running everywhere. And I scream at the top of my lungs, Jesus Christ, I give you my life. I'm yours. Wow. In that moment, I passed from death to life. Come on. Come on in that preach. moment, all the drug addiction, we were sticking needles in our veins, smoke yeah. a bag a day drink a case a day, and instantaneous deliverance by the power of God. Come on. Wow. And I experienced a mighty baptism in the Spirit, went home that afternoon for two hours on my, my front porch swing, undone by how blue the sky was, Come on. how green the grass was, and how loud the birds were. <laughs> and it kick-started a season of revival in our hometown where I led my brother to the Lord. I had a drug ring of friends that had encounters. We would see half the high school come to Jesus. Come on. Five meetings a week till three in the morning. And God invaded a small town in Northwest Arkansas with a with the spirit of revival. And how old were you at this time when this was taking place? I was uh, 20 years old. 20. That's just, I was a month before I turned, two months before I turned 20, get saved. So now here you are preaching, you're praying. What led you into, a lot of people that maybe don't know you, don't realize you have a strong emphasis on prayer. You are a man of prayer. When people are like, somebody needs to talk about prayer, who would you have teach on prayer? I always think of Corey Russell. You're a man of prayer. How did you get into this place where you go from revival, God awakens you, what brought you into that lifestyle of prayer and then i want to also talk about how important that is i think a lot of people watching this think prayer is something you do five minutes before bed lord don't let any burglars break in my house but people don't realize and prayer bless meal too yeah, yeah. absolutely bless the meal <laughs> and a lot of christians don't pray they have zero prayer life outside of like you just said eating your meal or going before bed how do you get in this place of hours a day in prayer intercession being a part of a ministry that is all about prayer yeah. what yes. led you into that place well i connected the dots that what i was experiencing in that move of god was the result of the years and wow. decades of the faithful intercession the prayers oh, that stores up and i was reaping the benefit of someone else's labor mm. and so i began to connect with my best friend's mom and her friends and i spent my first two years hanging out the majority of my time i'm 20 years old 20-year-old freak right out of the world, 
Come on. And I'm hanging out the majority of my time with two 50-year-olds and one 80-year-old woman. <laughs> and these women taught me how to pray. Wow. They go, you don't need your favorite song on before you start praying. Ooh. They go, you got tongues in the Bible. You, they taught me about early morning prayer, about late night prayer, about praying through the night, about mm. what happens when a burden comes on you and how to steward a burden into seeing it released in the place of prayer. And so I just cut my teeth on it. I want At the end of the day, I love the presence of God. Come on. I want to be on. near him. I want to be around him. And I want to talk it to him mm. and look at him and hear him and ask him to do things in the earth. Mm. There's just this insatiable longing from the beginning, That's good. I want to be in the presence of God all the time. So good. And I want to have a time, and then I want to live in it. Yeah, and I think, Jared, a lot of people think God is boring. They think prayer is boring. <laughs> That's really the anthem of our generation, yes. is God is boring, God isn't exciting, there's no fun in prayer, there's no... But what I've realized is the true place of encounter, the true place where you get lit on fire, where you become like God, is yes. in the place of prayer. Yes. And so many people don't pray. They say they don't have time to pray. I always tell people Paul was the busiest person in history, yet Paul said, I pray without ceasing. Yes. Mm -hmm. So prayer is more than just a religious duty. What are your thoughts about people that are like, prayer is boring? I mean, you pray, I know, hours a day. What are your thoughts on when people are like, prayer is boring, there's no nothing happening in prayer? What does an average like prayer session look like when you're going into prayer or well, the most reason why it's boring it's because our views of God are boring mm. we don't see Come him on, rightly preach. to see God rightly is to want to talk to him and the fact is he's boring in most believers minds it's because we've made him we've made a God in our own image come on we it's the essence of idolatry is the entertainment of thoughts about God that are unworthy of him wow and so God is stunning God is absolutely <laughs> stunning he's been stunning these burning creatures with the same word forever They've never gotten used to him. Come on. They've never said, what are we going to do next? They've never said, hey, what's coming up after this? They're absolutely <laughs> captivated by the beauty of God. So and God good. keeps stunning them over and over and over again with fresh discoveries of who he is. Wow. So we get access through the death and resurrection of Jesus by his blood. He cleanses us, mm. fills us with his spirit, and gives us access to the most beautiful, exhilarating person in the whole wide world. And I get to live in contact and Come communion on. with Let's this go. person. What in the world is there better? That's why prayer is boring. And another reason it's boring is because we've turned it into a list. Mm. It's just about, I. it's transactional, Isaiah. It's, a, it's transactional. Mm. I'll come to you. Here's my list. Break in on these things, and then I'll serve you, or I'll put more in next week's tithe. But <laughs> but it's so much more than yes. a transactional yes. list. Come on. It's about connection to a person. So good. And so that that's what I feel like God's going to break boredom off this generation when we see God rightly. So good. You have anything, Jared? I know yeah. I'm totally... <laughs> no. Jared, poor Jared hasn't said a word, and we're... Uh, I'm just happy to be in the room. In. Yeah, so I'm just happy so to be good. here. So good. The anointing is uh, in here, man. Yeah, Corey, tell us a little bit. You've written several books. Uh, I think you said 10 books or so. But tell us... 10 books? 10 wow, books, yeah. Mind. Yeah, I've I've written like... Uh, I've written 10 pages. <laughs> yeah, that's me too. <laughs> so. Once in Bible college seven years ago. Um, one of your recent books, Teach Us to Pray... Uh, go into a little bit about what And I'm going to link these. By the way, so let me say this as well. I'm going to link your books. I'm going to link your school in the description. Guys, I'm telling you, please listen to me. This is one of my all-time favorite yes, preachers. Too. One of the very few people, I just told Jared, I haven't listened to a sermon in a long time. One of the very few people I listened to for a long time, I would say the first five years of my salvation. I kid you not, wow. you... David Wilkerson and Leonard Ravenhill were the only three people I listened yeah, to for like goodness. a five-year period. So you have a heart and a spirit of revival. It's what this generation needs. We desperately need revival. And so I want people to get these resources, get these books, yes. get these e-courses because they will light you on fire. Absolutely. And we desperately need this message of revival. In my mind, maybe I'm wrong, you're a revivalist. When people ask me, what it, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. a revivalist. You're about revival. And so, so I want to interject there that the book will be linked, your latest, yeah. in the description but yeah, I've, I've so said good. I've said at the end of the day, I want to be the Leonard Ravenhill of this generation. Wow. And I want to be the Ian e. Bounds of this generation. Ian mm. e. Bounds wrote on prayer, and then Leonard Ravenhill preached on prayer, but more than all of it, I want to be a man of prayer. Come on. It's good. I mean, it it the teach us to pray. This is what blows me away, guys. The disciples were in a walking revival service with the Son of God for three and a half years. <laughs> they were they heard every message. Witnessed every deliverance, healing, miracle, da, 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 da. And the one thing they asked him was, Lord, teach us to pray. Mm. They connected the dots that Jesus' yep. public life of Come ministry on. was the result of his private life of prayer. 
And I believe God wants to restore that cry from the church. Jesus, teach us to, to pray. pray. Take us by the hand. And we need mothers and fathers that actually break through the shallow, break through the plastic, break through the That's before good. bed and before mm -hmm. meals so into a living, abiding reality yeah. that could take a generation by the hand go. and introduce them to God. So good. And so they asked Jesus, teach us to pray. And, and by the first lines of the Lord's Prayer, he's ripping up the prayer list. <laughs> Because it doesn't start with asking for something, but looking at someone. Wow. Good. He said, "When I'm getting rocked over here, I have one just for me. I might not even post this. This is my personal podcast." <laughs> he goes, I'm like, "When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name.' It doesn't start with asking for anything. Mm. It doesn't start with the request, but it but it connects us with who are you talking to? Mm. Who are we talking to? Most of us so see good, God." Corey. As a middle class working dad with seven billion children. Wow. Oh, that is a word. Middle class yeah. working dads have good hearts but limited resources. Mm. And we are talking to the inexhaustible, eternal, omnipotent, omniscient God who is limitless in his power, limitless in his glory, limitless in his generosity. He is rich and he's generous. And we need a restored vision of our Father. That's another big one right there. To stir up the word father can stir up a lot of pain for many people. Yeah, sure. yeah. And I believe Jesus came to the earth to share his father with the whole world. Wow, man, these one-liners. Oh, I'm going to fall over, guys. I'm going to fall over. He came to share it. And so I think there's a revelation of the father. The foundation of the father is what releases the spirit of prayer because it's a spirit of belonging. And it's a spirit of inheritance and confidence so in good. the house that releases authority. That's where you get that history. So I think it's our Father. He's in heaven. I think that the throne room of God, the Revelation 4 throne room of God, God is inviting a generation to come to the throne of grace, mm. to see the one shining and burning and emerald rainbows surrounding, lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire, four living creatures full Ooh, of eyes. I'm getting blessed. Come on. Who do not rest day or night, yes. saying, Holy, holy, holy. He says, Hallowed be your name. Jesus takes us to the throne. Mm. And he says, Guys, that's where prayer begins. And I think it's time for this generation to get out of just responding to whatever the cultural conversation is and ascend to the throne. Mm. And I think, too, a lot of people aren't praying. They're not spending time because they feel like they're not gaining anything when they pray. Mm. So we spend time on social media trying to gain a following, yeah. posting selfies, addicted to all the success in the world, and especially pastors. I meet a lot of pastors and leaders, and I'm sure you do, too, that don't pray. Yeah. They literally tell me, I, I don't pray. I don't remember the last time I got in prayer. Yes. And so I think a lot of us aren't like God because we're not spending time with God in the secret place. And Jesus tells us the Father is in the secret place. Yes. We're all mad about, oh, I can't find God. Where do I find God? I'm looking here. I'm looking there. You don't have to look to the New Age. You don't have to look to some occult religion. You can look to the secret place. The Father is in the secret place. And when yes. you lock in with God, you start becoming like the person you spend time with. It's like the famous saying, I always say this, if you hang out at a barbershop, you're going to get your hair cut. Yep. And if you hang out with God, you're going to become like him. Uh. And sadly, to me, many of our secret places have cobwebs. Many people watching this live right now, you don't go to the secret place. Yes. You don't know how to pray. You've never gotten alone with God. And I've had these encounters with God in the secret place where I go, why don't I do this more? Why is it so easy to spend hours on TikTok, hours on Instagram, hours on Facebook, hours on YouTube and social media. And the moment I get in prayer, I'm immediately bored. I'm immediately yes, tired. Yes, I'm distracted. I mean, th there's yeah, distraction. You, talk, you call it the table of distraction. Yeah. There's a war going on for the attention of this generation. And social media has been a curse in the distraction of a generation, distracting us from the place of prayer, distracting us from getting to know the God that you said made us in his image, yep. not the God that we've made in our image yes. that wants us in the place of prayer. And I tell people, schedule it. If you have That's to exactly schedule right. everything yeah. else, to. put it on your calendar, make yourself pray. Your flesh doesn't want to do it. I don't pray when I feel it. I pray till I feel it. I tell uh. my flesh to shut up. I'm going to pray. Ooh. My flesh is weak, but my spirit is willing. And I think there has to be a forcing myself into the place of prayer until I develop that relationship. But I also want to ask you about tongues. I've seen this right now. I'm sure you're aware. There is an all-out assault, and I'm going to just say it the way it is. I don't care who's watching, make videos, reaction, whatever. 
There is a demonic assault on tongues. Yes. There's a demonic doctrine against tongues. There's a massive group of people on social media, pastors, leaders that are saying tongues are not of God. Tongues are demonic. There's no such thing as praying in tongues. There's only speaking in, you know, another language and then it's interpreted, which of course we know Paul says that's not true. There's a tongue where it's you and God. No one understands. Yes. But I am seeing an all out war yes. on yeah. tongues, on praying in tongues. I got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit right there at the same time, speaking in tongues, went from being an atheist to a revivalist. I didn't ask for tongues. I didn't know about <laughs> tongues. Nobody laid hands on me, and it's revolutionized my uh, life. Yeah. This year, I'm trying to pray in tongues every day. Yes. I'm trying to go hard on speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. Give us some of your, how much has tongues <laughs> changed your life? How much of your prayer life is in tongues? And then also your thoughts on this whole tongues are not for today, which is just laughable. I have a hard time not laughing when I hear that statement. Um, but I want to just hear your overall thoughts on tongues yeah, and praying the, in tongues. The devil doesn't waste his time on things that don't hurt his kingdom. Mm, that's good. And if the devil has worked overtime to divide the church yes, over one issue, yes. it's over the issue of tongues. Yep. The devil is showing his hand. And mm. I believe by the amount of division and demonic activity against it. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 18, the Apostle Paul is looking at the Corinthians who are zealous for spiritual gifts. Yes. Zealous to move in all the stuff, and he dropped the most gangster verse in the whole wide world. <laughs> I thank God I speak with tongues more than all of you. Mm. He lived in this. He constantly was, whether he was traveling or working or in prison, in between, everywhere. I think it's the greatest secret to his devotional Come life. Yep. I think it's the doorway to the man that walked in the realm of revelation, the man that walked in the character of Christ, in the holiness of Christ, in the power yeah, of Christ. Good. The doorway he gave us is... I thank God I speak with wow. tongues more than all of you. Yeah, that's super The good. busiest man that's ever lived. And the devil is worked overtime. We don't see one verse that says that all of that ended in the first Come on, century. Yeah. Come on. We don't see one verse that says it's ended, yet the enemy is seeking to steal this from a generation because it's the doorway into the treasure chest of heaven, mm. into the knowledge of God. Guys, I can't even begin to talk about what it's done for me. I got thrust into it when we first moved to a place uh, early on in our ministry and in our life, and I we would get just demonic warfare in mm -hmm. the middle of the night. Wow! And I didn't. We would have things like literal things come up in the room trying to intimidate us. Things hitting our child, nightmares, torment, all kinds of stuff. And I and out of frustration, I said, God, I'm going to pray in tongues until the shift comes. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to pray in tongues until the shift comes. Sometimes it would be 20 minutes. Sometimes it'd be two hours mm. and I would pace in my living room until that supernatural peace came over me and I became addicted to the shift, addicted to the shift. Cause most of us only think of tongues when you fall down at the altar yeah. mm -hmm. or when you do it, when you quote unquote feel God. Yeah, yeah. But Paul said, I do this all the time. Wow. I do this whether I feel it or I don't. And what God taught me in that season is there is a perfect prayer prayed from the Holy spirit to God because Jesus, the one at the right hand, and the spirit within you are in perfect unity. Yes. They're in perfect unison, and they're into, and through tongues, we're caught up into the mind of God. We're caught up into the will <laughs> of on, God. And what you see happen is it wow. built, it, there's several things. First Corinthians 14, he says that we don't speak to men, yep. but we speak to God. Yes. Okay? That's the number one thing. We speak to God. You have a direct phone line. Number two, we speak mysteries in the spirit. Yeah. There's a realm of revelation that opens up through extended times of praying in tongues. Good. And guys, I got to say extended because most of us are so weak in our spirits. Mm. Most of us are so just flabby in yep. our spirits yep. that we don't know how to break through the 12 minute mark, yeah. the 15 minute come mark, on, come on. where it begins to enter into a shift. Guys, there is a realm of revelation. What does that look like? Bible verses start popping. Mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the ceiling lifts. Clarity comes. You see God. God gets magnified. His voice gets clearer. Your inner knower gets sharper. The, the dream life opens up. Your, your, the prophetic spirit begins to open up. So there's a realm of mysteries that I believe is the inheritance so of every believer. Amazing. This is for everyone else. We edify ourselves. Well, you, I'm grateful for man's hands laid on me, but there's a lot more anointed Come on, hands Come on. on the inside of yes. you. Yes. That when you begin to lay hold of that power source, I call it spiritual weightlifting, mm. or you're building might in your inner man. 
You're building strength. It says of John the Baptist, he became mighty in spirit. <laughs> and there, we, we aren't mighty in spirit. Come on. We're mighty in charisma, yep. mighty in gifting, yep. mighty in personality. Oh. But mighty in spirit is the ability to stay steady in shaking seasons, to stay steady yeah. in difficult places, to, to, to break through obstacles. When the spirit of despair gets on you, you know how to break it off of you because right. mm -hmm. you got might in your spirit. And I feel like he says you edify yourself. Yep. He's, it's one of the armor of God. You know, he's given us yep. two offensive yep. weapons, mm -hmm. the sword of the spirit and praying with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. spirit. And it's praying in the spirit that wields the sword of the spirit. <laughs> and most of us are trying to wield a William Wallace sword with a Minnie Mouse spirit. Come on. Ooh. Preach. A uh -oh. William Wallace sword with wow. a Minnie Mouse spirit because it takes might to wield the word of God. Jesus fought it is written. written. Yep. And, 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 and this is so powerful, Isaiah Jared, that the devil left him until a more opportune time mm. after that, three and a half years later. Most of us get a breakthrough on Saturday, and the demon says, okay, I'll see you on Tuesday. <laughs> Come, on. Come on. I'll see you on Tuesday. Come when on. you get back around the TV or you get back around that website yep. or you get back around, I've seen a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Jesus' power broke the devil touching him or even being near him for three and a half years. Wow. wow. That's the kind of power I want coming out of my mouth, and I want to see a generation get into this, wielding the sword of the Spirit. One of the greatest benefits of praying in tongues is he makes us like him, mm. and his first name is Holy. <laughs> he makes us like him. You love what he loves. You hate what he hates. Come on. What you look at, listen to, talk about, and touch He's got, a, he's got his finger on all of it mm. as we're walking in deep intimacy with him. Oh, Guys, the devil is I, the devil's seeking to steal this from the church. I believe it's going to be one of the greatest unifiers of the yes, church. So good. It's through extended times of tongues because this is God's gift. You know, Genesis 11, you had them all with one language, and he scattered the yep, languages. Yep, yep. And the inverse of Babel is Pentecost. Come it's on. the languages that bring that divine unity. So and good. I think we're going to start seeing, I, I just see it as the end. The denominational strongholds are coming down. The living on our islands of how we've always done it. Yeah. And there is a hungry generation that says there is more. So good. And I want everything Jesus died for, and Jesus will hide his glorious mysteries and things that offend the mind. Mm. That's, why, that's why tongues is offensive to us. It's because it reveals our pride. It reveals our self-sufficiency and our wisdom of this world. And, and Jesus is after saying it's the glory of God to conceal a matter. Mm. And it's the glory of kings to search out a matter. So good. We're saying wow every five seconds, by the way. <laughs> Listen, a lot of you are listening on audio right now. You're not watching. We are getting rocked over here. So just ignore me and Jared, our wows I, and our amen. I mean, even driving here, we're, <laughs> yeah, we're so talking good. about real life. We're talking about situations, and then Corey says, hey, let's pray. Yeah. And immediately we're praying in tongues. Come on. And, you know, I I usually pray in tongues maybe, you know, five, seven minutes, and then a song pops in my mind or scripture verse, and I'll start saying, and Corey's just, shut up, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's Come just on. going, and I could just feel like this is an endurance runner that runs those like long 15 mile races and i'm like in my own life just being honest i'm like i need to do this more yes because i know what's happening on the inside of me yes. as i do this and the spirit inside the spirit inside of me is communing with the father and there's mm. this direct revelation for my life as Corey was talking about ripping up the actual shopping list of everything uh, I need the Lord yes. to do in my life. When you commune with the Holy Spirit, he actually reveals answers to your prayers, what you really need, and gives you prophetic direction on what you're supposed to do. And so even as we are praying here, Corey's even talking about some of the things that we're going to talk about in this podcast. He goes, this is what the Lord's laying on my heart. He didn't go, oh, I got this, this, this in my back pocket. The Spirit of God directed him on what so we we're going to do. And we usually will have like an outline of the questions. And we, Jared and me were like, we're not doing no outline. <laughs> no, we're going to no, flow yeah. in the Spirit. <laughs> Guys, we have no outline, no notes. This is the flowing in the Holy Spirit. And I think my audience, this generation, massively needs yes, to be speaking do. in tongues. I personally believe you could push back. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't. I believe God wants every believer yes. Yes. to to pray in tongues. Yes. Let's just say pray for lack of a better term to pray in tongues because Paul says, "I want all of you. Yes. I want all of you." So it's, I, I believe it's God's will 
if you have the Holy Spirit, and I also want to ask you, because I'm curious about this, I've gotten pushed back on this before, but I stand by what I say here. I believe at salvation, everybody gets sealed with the Holy Spirit. Yes. We know the Bible says you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It's the down payment till Christ's return, all that great stuff. But it seems to be, through my studying of the book of Acts, doing my verse by verse of the book of Acts, there's another experience yes. that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Now, I don't fully know, is it your soul getting baptized? I, I don't know. I just know at salvation, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, yes. but there's another experience, yeah, an yeah, outpouring works. of the Holy Spirit, which is when you get baptized. And I also believe it's not a one-time event. I believe those yes. watching right now yes. can Come get on. filled. And I know because Paul says, don't drink wine, don't be drunk on wine, which will ruin your life, That's right. but be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I came out of a background where for a few years, I was drinking almost every day. My brother, was who's sitting here producing the show, was drinking almost every day. We didn't drink once a week on Sunday. Yeah. We didn't drink once a month. We didn't drink, you know, seven years ago in band camp mm. one time at some Holy Ghost <laughs> meeting. We used to drink every day. So in my mind, when I'm reading Paul saying, don't be drunk on wine, which ruins your life, I'm going, okay, so people get drunk on wine often. They drink every night. I used to drink every day. But instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. So it's yeah. being filled. I can be filled right now. Yes. I can be filled tomorrow. I'm personally praying every day this year, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. One of the prayers I pray over my kids every single night, I've done this since they were born, and my oldest is nine now, every single night over every one of my kids, I lay hands and say, Lord, fill them with your Holy Spirit. Yes. Every single night. They're going to grow up at 18 years old. My daughter's going to say, my dad laid hands on me every single night Preach. for thousands of days now and prayed I'll get full of the Holy Spirit. How could they not if we're uh. praying this? So this has been an anthem in my life, a prayer, and this is what changed everything. When I was not just saved and sealed, praise the Lord for it, but I got baptized that night. That's where I got that conviction. Yes. That's where I went from death to life, where I no longer, like you said, I looked outside and the sky was blue. I saw a butterfly yeah. for the first time. I was shocked by everything because I was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And we see that in Acts. And we see Jesus telling the disciples, even after he blew the Holy Spirit That's on them, he said, wait until the Holy That's Spirit right. comes upon you. Mm -hmm. We see in Acts 19, Paul comes, or is in Acts 10, one of those, but Paul comes up to the believers in Ephesus, and they say, we've never even heard of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And Paul lays hands, and they receive the baptism. Yes. So do you believe that at salvation you get sealed, but there's another experience, and we'll pray that today towards the end of the show, of that baptism of the Holy Spirit. I do. I believe in it. I, you gave the verse, John 20, 22, Jesus blew on them mm. and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Good. I believe the disciples were born again at that moment. Yeah. They were born again at that moment. There's a difference between Holy Spirit in you and Holy Spirit upon you. Mm -hmm. And I think I think we have to discern the difference between him in us and on us. He gets in us at salvation. He comes on us at the baptism of the good. Spirit. Ooh. In us is for me. Upon us is for you. That's good. <laughs> and that's the difference, too. It's the anointing for works. He said, he blew on it. He goes, receive the Holy Spirit. Then he told him in Acts 1.8, go wait. He goes, for the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And you will be wow, witnesses good, good. to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, the uttermost parts of the earth. Well, that's what they did in on the day of Pentecost. He came upon them. Fast forward, Acts 4, two years later, and they were filled with the Holy mm. Spirit. All right? Fast forward. This is one of the greatest biblical apologetics for the second work that I, that I believe in, and that's what I stand in. Acts 8. Philip comes to Samaria, yes. he preaches the gospel, joy hits the city, deliverance, salvation hits the city, and then they call for the apostles, Peter and John, and then they come to receive the Holy Spirit. Wow. So salvation had come, yes. but now the apostles are going to release the baptism of the Spirit. So good. That's really powerful. You see at Acts 10, you see as they were hearing, the Holy Spirit came upon them. Uh, Acts 19 with the yep. church of Ephesus. Yep. They knew the baptism of John. It says he then preached Jesus and they were baptized into Jesus. Then he laid hands on them and they were baptized with the Holy Spirit. Wow. Guys, the, the, but, the, but see, even, I, I want to say this. Yes, I believe theologically the second work, but I want to say to all of our you know, Pentecostal brothers and sisters that have driven their stake in the ground on that, this is the core thing that I want to go after there is always more. Mm, <laughs> there is on. always more. And whenever you turn just the baptism of the Spirit into a badge, it becomes oh, a religious spirit. Yeah. Good. It becomes a religious spirit because you've arrived. Mm. And when you turn it into, I've arrived, they don't got what I got. Yeah, the same religious you. spirit you're judging is what you have. Wow. And you close the ceiling over your life from moving into the more. It's the Ephesians 5. Go on being filled with the Holy Spirit. 
There is fresh anointings, fresh fillings, fresh baptisms, fresh glory that never runs out. And as soon as we always got to say, there's always more. Yeah. Mm, so good. <laughs> My dad, the night he got saved oh, at a small, a small church, never been in church, didn't do the Christmas Easter thing, goes down to the altar, kneels down, only person in the church getting saved that night, gives his life to Jesus Christ. The pastor prays for him. He gets baptized in the Holy Come Spirit, on. immediately starts speaking in tongues. And it's like, what is that? And the pastor says, well, brother, you just got filled with the Spirit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's how they talk back then. And so, and that's my favorite he, one. He had no idea. This was not learned behavior. This was some radical transformation that God, in a moment, saved his soul and filled him with the Spirit. And my dad's life has been nothing more but to introduce people wow. to the Holy Spirit. His, but, his joy in life is to take somebody in a ride in his truck, and when they come back, eyes are bloodshot, tears, and they've got a new language. This come is on. the thing I love. John G. Lake, you know, so Pentecostal good. pioneer in the early days, he talks about it in one of his books about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He had operated in a ministry of healing for about mm. 10 years, and everybody around him were saying, John, you're surely baptized in the Spirit. And he says this, Yet I knew that my soul was on the borderland of a great expanse, and I was not satisfied until I'd fully crossed over. <laughs> so he tells the day of when him and another guy go to pray for a woman with rheumatoid arthritis. He says he's sitting in a chair like this. The guy and the woman is about seven to ten feet away from them, and he's sitting there just crying, saying, God, I want the baptism. And the Lord says, I've seen your cries and I've heard, he goes, I've, I've seen your tears and I've heard your cries. Mm. You're now to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. He says he felt a warm tropical rain come over him. Come on. <laughs> and it turned into volts of electricity that began to move up and down his body. And he says at that time, he says that the friend saw that he was getting touched. And he says, let's pray for him now. And the Lord says, don't touch her. Just stretch your hand out towards her. Wow. He stretched his hand out towards her. The power of God hit the woman, completely healed her, then hit the guy. He flew back five Come feet. On. <laughs> and the guy gets up, goes, Praise God, John, you've been baptized <laughs> in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I love that. I love that. I wanted to talk about as well receiving the baptism. <laughs> yeah. Jesus says, Ask. Yes. Ask. Yes. A lot of people I know. Because I watch some of the criticism against the speaking mm -hmm. in tongues, baptism, because I have to obviously defend the, the doctrine and defend the faith. And they say, you know, oh, if God wanted me to have it, I would just get it. Yeah. A lot of these guys, sadly, they're actually bitter from a lack of experience. So they say we're all about experience. So a guy like you, they would say, oh, you're just all about your experience. You don't care about the word. But their whole theology <laughs> is based on a lack of experience. That's right. Yeah. So they're basing their theology. It's their experience. Yep. Their experience mm -hmm. of not experiencing God in his presence. And so I heard one guy say, big big name speaker like if god wanted me to have the holy spirit he would just give it to me or the baptism or tongues or healing or miracles or gifts of prophecy whatever but in my mind i was thinking you're backwards you think god's going to give it to you and then you're going to ask for it yes. jesus said you need to ask yes. and if you being evil know how to give good gifts yes. how yes. much more does your heavenly father want to give the holy yes. spirit yes. to who those that ask. Yes. There's a knocking, there's an asking, there's a seeking, there's a there's a searching. There's something about my pursuit. And so we have people right now that are going to be in the chat. We have people that are going to message us and say, I'm discouraged. I've been praying. I've been asking. And I tell them, keep asking. Yes. Keep knocking. Yes. If you're watching this, don't be discouraged. Don't be dismayed. Yep. You're sealed with the Holy Ghost. You're saved. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you are saved. Sealed with the Holy Ghost. There is that other encounter. There is that speaking, that praying in tongues. There's that power encounter. And instead of being critical, negative, bitter, angry, resentful, unbelief, uh, all of these things about it, what if we spent right now going, I'm going to ask for this. I'm going to ask. I had one lady come to our conference. Will you pray for me? I've been wanting tongues, all this. Yeah, we're going to pray. We're going to pray. Didn't get it. Didn't get it. We're going to pray. We kept praying. I prayed for three, four, five times. I told her, go home tonight. Get alone with God sit on your bed and ask him for the Holy Spirit. Because we're in a loud conference. Everybody's screaming, shouting, speakers loud. The bass is blowing her hair. She doesn't even, you know, we could barely hear anything. I said, go home and ask. Sit there. She's been 20, 30 years, something like that. She's been asking. She came back to the conference the next day. She said, last night I sat on my bed. I put my hands out because I tell people, put your hands out like you're receiving a gift. Mm -hmm. I put my hands out. And all of a sudden she said, from the top of my head, I felt something go down to the bottom of my feet, and I started I started speaking. I've been praying for years, and I just got quiet with God, and I just asked him, Father, you're a good father. Yes. You yes. said. And I always tell people, tell God, speak the word back to God. Yes. Tell, tell God, 
Lord, you said, if I ask, Lord, you said, if I knock, remind him of his word. The Bible says to bring into remembrance his word back to him. And so she, she got it. And I believe those watching right now, because I really feel the Holy Spirit on this, they're, they're frustrated. They're yeah, tired. Yeah. And I'm sympathetic towards them because yeah, yeah. they've been Absolutely. praying and asking. But man, what do you, what do you tell people that say that? Like, man, I just tell you, ask him. He's a good father. He'll give though to those that ask. Yeah, I, I think it is that. I think we need to dial down, look at him. And ask him. Mm. And I think I think we need to remove, I, I see it many times, like every gift of the Spirit, many times God, even with, when it comes to prophecy, God will give you a little bit. It's good. And if you, and he requires you to step out in faith with a little bit. Yes, so true. And that blows open the yeah. door. Yeah, it does. Yep. That's how all the gifts, because there's an element of faith. Yes. There's a stepping out. And a lot of us want God to knock us down, open up our mouths, and start <laughs> moving on. our tongues. Come on. Well, because God, I'm not going to control anything. Come he on. He doesn't do it that way. John 4 says he will spring up. There'll be, there'll be a springing up, John 7, a breaking out, which means there'll be a, a, a slight springing up. And there is a moment where God wants you to look like an idiot. Mm. He, there is a moment of yeah. looking like a fool in the mind's eye I was just gonna say that humility. steps yep. out to say, God, I'll take yes. the syllable. I'll take the phrase. Yes. And I'm going to reach out and let my spirit reach for mm. God. Mm. And I find that if you step out when those waves come and do it alone, do it alone in your closet, do it alone in your bedroom, when you're alone with God and you feel those waves come up, step out. Good. And watch That's the so dam good. get broken open in your life <laughs> instead of getting out of this idea of God coming and controlling your mm. person. Mm. I love that you said that because a lot of people, they want to pray in tongues so bad, but they're like, I'm just going to wait. And I, I pray for people and see it all the time where they start feeling. I say, when you feel a bubble up, like you just said, yes. when you feel something come and stirring, open up your mouth. That's yes. it. And the Lord will fill your mouth. And he yes. told the disciples, you go before the courts and I'll bring to remembrance. Yes. Open your mouth and I'll bring to remembrance. Yes. And a lot of people, they want God to make them do it they want god to force them paul says this when you prophesy he says take turns prophesying because each one of you are in control of your spirit wow. so prophecy is not this spontaneous thing where so, oh, 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 i start prophesying you actually control your spirit that's right you open up your mouth and you prophesy by faith and the same way with tongues is a lot of you watching right now you need to open up your mouth as you fill a bubble up as the holy spirit's filling you of course we're not telling you fake it but open your mouth yeah. and speak out, yes. and the Holy Spirit will pray back to God. The Bible says, who can know the mind of God but the Spirit of That's God? Right. So the Holy Spirit, Romans talks about him praying the perfect will of God. When I know not to pray, the Spirit himself, good. When, when wordless groans, yes. prays through me. It's such a beautiful thing when you get this baptism. It's so life-changing. Now, there is an element to laying hands. We know Paul laid hands yes. and they received it. And we lay hands in our services. Yes. You do, yeah, Jared absolutely. does, I do. We pray. If you want it, we're going to lay hands and pray. But no one laid hands on me when I got it. Yeah. And we know in Acts chapter 10, when Peter's preaching to Cornelius' household, yeah. as Peter's preaching, remember guys, Peter didn't even believe that the Holy Spirit had validated no. the Gentiles or <laughs> at all. He didn't believe. But the Bible says the Holy Spirit came upon them. They started speaking in tongues. And then Peter's like, well, we should baptize you. But then Peter goes back and says... God is extending this message of grace to the Gentiles. And here's how I know. As I was preaching to them wow. in Cornelius' house, they got baptized. And that baptism was God validating wow. the right. message is not just for the Jews, but now also the yes, Gentiles. Yes. And then Paul later will say, actually, God came to the Gentiles to make the Jews jealous yes. because they didn't want the message. But man, I see that and go, as Peter's preaching, wait a minute. You're telling me right now as people are listening in their cars, they're driving for Amazon with the earbuds in, watching this podcast right here on the live. You're telling me they can get full of the Holy Ghost while yes. we're preaching? Right now. Absolutely. Yeah, right, right now. now. You don't have to wait till well, we're going to pray in 20 minutes. No, you don't have to wait for 10 minutes till we pray or 15 minutes. God can baptize you yes. in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's, a, it's the most life-changing thing that will ever happen to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you got something, Jared? <laughs> I'm, I know. We're just blasting at it. We're just like... I. Well, I thought it was really important, too, that you you brought up the element of faith, because while some people will just get it immediately, yep. there's other people that I've seen when I prayed for them, you know, it's a syllable at first, or it's just them stepping out in faith. And the same thing with the gift. If you're getting a word of knowledge, sometimes I just see somebody and I get one word and I'm like, yes. God, I have no idea what's yes. going to happen after that word. But as I open my mouth and I say, you right there in the red sweatshirt, I hear the Lord saying this, and then boom, boom. the download of heaven comes. Yes. 
And it was, but it was me being willing to risk, yes. come on, take a step out and go, oh, I hope I land on something That's solid. That's it. And as soon as I did that, and some of you that are watching right now, I just want to encourage you. You, I, I remember praying for a young man. This is in 2010. I was at a church conference. He comes forward and like literally escorted by his family. He's been praying. For, he's one of the Baptists of the Holy Spirit so Come on. bad. You know, can you give him any advice? And any advice? I said, please listen. I, this is going to happen tonight. I Come set on. the expectation. This is going to happen tonight. You're watching. This is going to happen yes. tonight for you. We're yes. going to set the expectation. Yes. You've waited long enough. And I told this young man, I said, look, I want you to lift your hands, and I just want you to be in a posture to receive. And I said, as soon as you feel anything, just by faith, open your mouth. Forget the demons in your head that Come say, on. you're making it up. Don't worry. That's just regurgitated. You're listening to who so-and-so's tongue, all that stuff. I go, cut all that out and just open your mouth and see what happens. And he's like, okay. And in about T minus half a second, this young man was filled with the spirit, spoke in tongues, and the whole place went wild. Come on. They celebrated the fact that God gave such a beautiful gift to a young man that longed for it for years and years and years. So everyone that's watching, you've been longing for it. Yep. You've even been on the critic side of things, and now you're even hungry just going, God, I actually need this. You felt the stirring in your heart, even as Corey was talking and Isaiah's been talking. And you know this is what's missing in your life. Yep. It's, now we're going to leave the, uh, we're going to leave the sideline and we're going to put you in the game tonight. Tonight you are going to receive the baptism of the Spirit. Yes, absolutely. And that and that to me is, you know, the Bible says in Acts 1, you shall receive power. So all of these things we call where we say Christianity is boring. I know you preach about this. It's not boring. You're boring. Yeah. We're bored. <laughs> It is boring if you don't have the Holy Spirit. Yes. It is yes. boring if you're doing religion. And we know religion's what we're left with when the Holy Spirit leaves. And a lot of us are living a spiritless life. Yes. We're Christians because we prayed a prayer and invited Jesus to build a treehouse in our heart, but we don't actually walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. And a lot of us, if we're honest, we're too full of ourselves to really be full of the Holy Spirit. Because one thing about the Holy Spirit, the devil will let you sit on the throne of your life and he'll sit on another throne. The Holy Spirit's jealous. He will not yeah, let you yeah. sit on the throne of your life. And God will say, if you want to be full of yourself, if you want to be mm -hmm. arrogant, because I know there's people watching this that are mockers. They're like, it's not yeah, real. It's, it's fake. God will let you keep living that way. The yeah. Bible says God will turn you over to your own deception yeah. and to your own delusion. So you have to actually start with saying, I'm wrong, which is what repentance is. God, you're right. And I want this. I've yeah. been wrong about this. I let some crusty, dusty old religious teacher tell me this isn't for me this isn't for today that is a lie from the devil this is for you this is for today we're going to pray for you here in a minute to get it but i believe the power of god is for every single believer so we can all walk in this we can all walk in the spirit and that power gives you authority not only to cast out demons to heal the sick preach all these things baptize people you have that supernatural boldness it gives you power to say no to sin yes like you came out of a yes. lifestyle heavy drugs, heavy partying, drinking, all of that. I, I was in similar without the drugs, but the drinking, the partying, the sleeping around, living that, the, the cha game changer for me was what brought me out. How did you stop drinking and partying and yeah. sleeping around? It was the Holy Spirit's yes. power. Yes. I no longer was a slave to sin. Yes. It was like the Holy Spirit broke those chains and said, you don't have to go sleep with that girl. Yes. You don't have to go drink at that thing. It's so good. for those of you struggling, you say, Isaiah, I'm a Christian. I prayed the prayer. I go to church. I, I warm the chair on Sunday. But you're lacking that Holy Spirit power right. and conviction. What did Jesus say? He said, the Spirit will come, convict the world of sin and of righteousness yes. and, and the judgment of God. Yes. So that, that first assignment of the Holy Spirit is conviction. Yes. There's a conviction in you. Yeah. And will you talk to us a little bit about that? And then we're going to pray for the chat. But will you talk really quick about that, that conviction of sin, that power of the Holy Spirit and how that brought change in your life. And of course, for us, we could give our testimony. We've done it before in the past of the Holy Spirit was the game changer yeah. that brought that conviction. Uh, he of is sin. the game changer and he breaks the power. Come I think on. we need to get back. OK, you say I'm a I, I, I'm a, I'm a Christian, but yep. I'm struggling with this. Paul makes it very clear in Romans that our old man was crucified with him, that it was buried with him and then raised in the newness of life. Mm. And that, you know, he talks about later in Romans 5 about how we've received the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness to reign as kings, <laughs> to reign in life <laughs> through the one, Jesus Christ. Wow. And I think we're walking around not understanding that the power has been broken. The power has been broken and that we've we keep trying to raise a dead man. Yeah. We keep trying to raise our old man to live in that. But we've been liberated. I think that's key. 
And then there's this issue of humility. I think Christianity isn't about trying harder. It's about surrender. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not about, I got to do better. I've got to give over the rights of my life. I've got to give over the rights of my life, the control, the bitterness, the unforgiveness, the pride, the self-sufficiency, yeah, that's good. and surrender to the power of the Spirit because he feels humility. Mm. God <laughs> responds to humility. Oh, and when he good. sees it, I need, that's what he feels. And, and so it's this core reality of I need you, God. Yeah. He convicts, he empowers, he, he feels so but you good. gotta surrender yes. and, and invite him into that spot. So good. I think the first thing you see Jesus preaching was, of course, the first word out of his mouth in his sermon was repent. But when they ask him, like, how do we become your followers and disciples? He deals with the selfishness of man heart and he yeah. says, Deny yourself. Yes. Mm-hmm. The first thing you have to do is deny your wants, remove selfishness, die to self, and come after me and follow me. So this whole doorway into the spiritual realm, the doorway, everything we've talked about for the last hour, the doorway to prayer, the doorway to the spirit realm, the doorway to be full of the Holy Spirit, the, really, the only way you're going to survive the coming days, the storm coming, which we've been in a storm, but as in the days of Noah, so will the second coming of the Son of Man be. Going into 2024, I, me and Jerry talked about this in a podcast a couple weeks ago, is my emphasis is on prayer. We started with seven days of prayer, live streams every day. We are going into prayer. We're having weekly prayer meetings with our partners. This is, for me, the year of prayer where I want to get closer to God yes. than yes. I've ever been before, yes. Yes. where I want to develop what you call a history with God in the secret place, yes. which is a whole nother sermon you guys need to listen to he's done and really when i stand before god god going i know you not because you went to a service on sunday which we should still do yeah, praise reach. the lord for sunday service i don't ever want to diminish the gathering together the, the saints as the bible says many have but god says it's not because i knew you on sunday i knew you because we had a secret place we yes. had a devotion life yes. we got alone together so i want to do this I know there's a service you're heading to. You're literally preaching tonight. You did a podcast <laughs> yesterday. You've been preaching and nonstop. And so I, I'm so grateful you've been on this podcast. I'm so grateful you're here. I know it was all God that this all came together. But I want to actually end this podcast with us actually praying. Yes. I want to actually pray. We've been talking about prayer for the yes. last hour. But I really want you to pray for those watching. Pray for the live audience. And guys, we're not talking about some religious prayer. We're not going to Mary. We're not going to St. Joseph. We're not going to Peter. You don't need to go to nobody. The Bible says there's one mediator yes. between God and man. Yeah. The man, Christ the man. Jesus. Yeah. We're going by the power of the Holy Spirit directly to Jesus, to the man. And we're going to pray, because this is really what we felt this podcast turned into. We're going to pray the same way you were baptized there, right at that on that parking lot in front of all those people. Right there, I was baptized in an altar, 2011, Modesto, California. I was baptized at eight years old. I don't remember it, but my dad Baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) We're not talking about water baptism here. We're not talking about sprinkling the baby. We are talking about baptized in the power of the Holy Ghost. We are believing that right here... Tuesday night for you watching, you are going to get baptized yes. in the power of the Holy Spirit as Corey prays and we'll pray as yeah. well. Um, let's just pray that they would be baptized in that fire and that same yeah. revival spirit that's on us yes. would just get on them. Well, you gave the verse earlier, Luke 11, verse 13. If you being evil mm-hmm. know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit, spirit. to those who ask him? We don't have a reluctant father. We don't have a stingy father. We don't have a mean father. You have a generous father. Mm. He loves to give the Holy Spirit to his children. And friends, he loves you. It is your inheritance is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You're not twisting his arm. You're opening your heart. So we open our hands right now. Lord Jesus, Father, we come before you right now. You're a generous father and you're rich. Father, I ask you to baptize and to fill every person that's on this call right now with the Holy Spirit. I pray from the top of heads to the bottom of feet. I pray for a fountain to spring up and a river to break out. (laughs) I pray, God, that you would release new tongues. You said Mark 16, they will, those who believe, they will speak in new New tongues. tongues. God, I thank you right now that you would release just the outpouring and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We confess we cannot do this in our own strength, our own wisdom, and our own abilities. We need you, God. God, I need you in every area. I need you in my life. I need you in my marriage. I need you in my family. I need you, God. God, I just pray that you, you said, blessed are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Oh, God, I just add, you said to those blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be filled. So fill us in the name of Jesus. Baptize us in the name of Jesus. Let's just begin to pray in the Spirit. Put your eyes on the throne of God. Put your eyes and reach for God with your Spirit. Reach for God with your Spirit. Just reach for Him. Fill cars right now. Fill cars right now with the glory of God. Fill bedrooms right now with the glory of God. Fill God kitchens right now with the glory of God. Fill, fill God, fill treadmills with the glory of God right now. Be filled in the name of Jesus. Yeah, entire families right now in Jesus' name. The father, the 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 wife, Lord, and all of their children's Lord. I say even my house, Lord. I just pray you would baptize all of my children in Jesus' name, Lord. All of Isaiah's daughters, Lord. Not just us as parents, Lord, but our children, Lord. Fill them afresh. Baptize them now in Jesus' name. Yes, lay your hands on your kids. Lay your hands on your wife. Lay your hands on your husband. Be filled. God, I pray you'd release destiny. The same way you spoke to me 13 years ago, what I'm doing now, you spoke to me 13 years ago. God, speak destiny into lives, God. I pray, Lord, speak revelation. Speak wisdom, God. Speak understanding. The plan of God, I pray, Lord, release it. In Jesus' name, God, your plan is not mysterious. But God, release destiny. Visions be resurrected. Weariness be broken. Every foul spirit must go in Jesus' name. Every foul spirit must go in Jesus' name. We pray power of God, anointing of the Holy Ghost, fire of the Holy Ghost. Be released. Yes, God, break it right now. Yeah, all yeah. alcohol addiction yes. and drug addiction. He said, don't be drunk, but be filled. God, I pray right now that you would break the power of alcohol and just substitutes that don't meet it. God, I just prayed it for fresh fillings of the Holy Spirit. Release it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yes, power of God be released. God, I pray right now, every sick person, we pray power of the Holy Spirit touch their body. Sickness must go. Cancer must go. Disease must go. Every sickness must go now. Loose them now. You have no power. Bodies come in alignment with the word of God. Lord, release your healing touch according to Psalms 103. All sickness and all disease is healed by his stripes. We are healed. So right now there's healing coming to your body. Uh, yes. There's deliverance coming to your body. Yeah. Every foul spirit, you are bound. Go back to the abyss yeah. in Jesus' name. You are bound, Satan. You have no power. You have no authority. Wow. Every generational curse is broken by the blood of Jesus. It ran in my family till it ran into me. It'll no longer. I want you to choose right now. I will pass down generational blessings, not generational curses. The Bible says choose today that you'll pass down blessings instead of curses. Be blessed or be cursed, the Bible says. And today we choose for our kids' blessing. No more distraction. No more compromise. No more living your whole life in front of video games. Living your whole life in front of TikTok. No more pornography. The power of lust and perversion is being broken. And I really feel this. God is breaking that homosexual spirit right now. God is breaking that homosexual spirit. It's being broken. Perversion and lust. Broken. Thank you, Lord. Corey, lead them in that prayer that you ask us to pray for our eyes. Yes, our eyes, God. Yeah, put your hands over your eyes right now. Yes. I want you to see the man with fire in his eyes. See the man with fire in his eyes and just say, Jesus, repeat this after me. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. For opening my eyes. For opening my eyes. To all forms of perversion. To all forms of perversion. 
Jesus, I'm sorry. Jesus, I'm sorry. I ask you right now. I ask you right now. For your blood that was shed at Calvary. For your blood that was shed at Calvary. To wash over me now. To wash over me now. From the top of my head. From the top of my head. To the bottom of my feet. To the bottom of my feet. I receive your cleansing. I receive your cleansing. I receive your washing. I receive your washing. And in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shut every door to darkness. I shut every door to darkness. I break all agreement with darkness. I break all agreement with darkness. And I sever every tie with darkness. And I sever every tie with darkness. And in the name of Jesus. Jesus. In, the In the name of Jesus, I open up new doors. I open up new doors. Doors of light. Doors of light. Truth. Truth. And revelation. And revelation. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Satan. Satan. I command you. I command leave you. Leave my mind. Leave my mind. Leave my emotions. Leave my emotions. And leave my desires. And leave my desires. You are not my master. You are not my master. And I'm not your servant. And I'm not your servant. Jesus is my master. Jesus is my master. And I'm his servant. And I'm his servant. So I command you to go. So I command you to go. 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 I just open up your hands. Yes, just say, Father. Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open up my eyes. Open, open up, up my eyes. eyes. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Touch our eyes, God. Yes. Thank Anoint you, us, God, with eye salve. She yes. yes. Thank yeah. you, Lord. And some of you that are watching right Jesus. now, you're like, this is the longest that you've probably prayed in a long time. And I just felt the Lord want to encourage you is that you can develop the secret life of prayer yes. too. Like this could be, I always tell my kids, oh. I have a secret life that nobody knows about. Come on. It's not oh. hidden sin, but it's this hidden life with God that I have not told anybody oh. out. The mysteries that he reveals to me, the things she that he speaks to me, answer. I've got this secret life. And I feel like the Lord wants that for you. So good. He does, and it's okay if that secret life gets found out. Come it's on. okay if somebody bumps in and goes, she what was dad doing? And is, oh, wow, sorry, dad, I didn't mean to, I didn't know you were praying. I didn't know that you were seeking the face of God. And Isaiah, I shared this before that I heard a noise when I was eight years old at 5 a.m. and I got up to go use the bathroom and I saw my dad's secret life. Mm. He was on the floor with his hands down, with his face in his hands, just praying in the spirit, crying out to the Lord. And I saw this... I saw the secret mm. of my dad's strength, how he could get, get up every day and continue to provide for the family, but yet his heart was so in tune with the Spirit and so tender Lord, to the Lord, and I knew that, oh, that's because before any of us awake, my dad has already met with yes. the Lord. So good, so good. I, I remember they asked David Ravenhill, what kept you from sinning, from partying, from drinking? And he said, literally the one thing, every time I wanted to party, drink, go out, I would get an image of my dad at four in the morning <sighs> praying on his face, crying out to God, whose dad was Leonard Ravenhill. And he said that right there kept me from being in the world, kept me from sin, and made me want to be a man of prayer, a man of revival, a man of holiness. So bring your kids in. And invite your kids into yeah. your prayer closet. Teach them to pray. This is Good. your job as their parent. But man, the anointing is so strong. <laughs> I know you have modulars, e-courses, and a schooling to yeah, teach yeah, people yeah. to pray. I, I know we, we went an hour. People need to learn more, know more. Where can they find, I, I'm going to link everything you talk yeah, about right yeah, now yeah. down below in the description, but if somebody says, I want to go deeper in prayer, I want to learn and develop a prayer life, I want to get more teachings, where can they find your ministry yeah. and, and get connected? The, the main way is CoreyRussellOnline.com. Okay. We've got over 40 courses, about 200 hours mm. wow. that are built specifically wow. to strengthening your life of prayer. So good. And we we do release courses every month, and then we do three one-hour lives every month. Wow. We have small groups, and we're connecting people from around the globe <sighs> to build their life in prayer and to build connections that mm -hmm. are going to hold your arms up so as you good. walk through life. So CoreyRussellOnline.com. Yes. So moderators right now, all my moderators that moderate my chat, they're going to be linking this, posting this. I want you guys to spam the link in the comments and in the chat. <laughs> I want you guys also to go down below, look at what I have in the description, the books. I'm going to link your books. I'm also going to link your album because Come everyone's going to say, what music yeah. were you talking about where he has a beat behind it? <laughs> I will link it, guys. It's not hard. It's Click description. <laughs> go to the link. That's my pregame before I get up to preach. That's my, my fight music. Yes. So I want you guys to check Check that out, CoreyRussellOnline.com. Also, I'll link your Instagram, your your YouTube, all of that. Make sure that's down below. And then is there anything else? Any Where can they find like your events? If you're going to be preaching somewhere, is that on CoreyRussellOnline? Yeah, that's CoreyRussell.org. CoreyRussell.org. Okay. Yeah, you'll find all my events. If I'm in your region, I got my, all my books, 10 different books okay. that are all out Man. there. You can get that on Amazon. 
and then the events and everything else. Amazing, amazing. Did I miss anything, Jared? Before no, we close I think it that's out tonight? it. No, that's we're good. in the glory, y'all. I'm telling yeah. you, it's hard we to go, go land. for another hour. Yeah, it, even... it's hard to land once you get into that heavenly realm and yeah, start praying and going awesome. after God. But I just feel the anointing in the studio. I feel the glory of God in the studio. I'm so glad we we're able to do this. Yes. But more than that, I'm glad for all the testimonies of people that are going to say, "I was filled with the Holy Spirit while you guys were doing. Yes. I got rocked. I got a prayer life." If one person watching this, which we know thousands will watch this, but if one person says this stream yes. caused me to get alone with God, yes. caused me to get full of the Holy Spirit. So if one person, it, to me, it's all worth it, yes. what we're doing, everything we're doing. So thank you so much, Corey, for being on. Yes. What an amazing show. And we got to do this again. Yes. Next time I have you on, we're going to do a prayer stream. We're going to do the whole, no talking. We're going to do the I'm whole coming. stream. I'm coming. I don't yeah. care if I'm invited. We're, we're going to do the whole stream in <laughs> prayer because, man, you have such a powerful anointing and gifting in prayer. And so I'm grateful for your uh, relationship. Thank you for having me. And you're me. awesome, man. Thank you. All right, guys, down below, hit in the comments comment where you're watching from get all the links make sure you partner and so so into this i want to sow into to Corey tonight regardless i'm going to send him a love offering but i want you guys to sow into this broadcast the links to give are in the description down below pin in the comments we love you guys and appreciate you guys and we'll see you in the next episode see you guys see you guys see god bless bye